In this video, I introduce different types of mirrors and also the equations of mirrors under the praxial approximation. The simplest mirror is planar mirror. It reflects the rays coming from a point P1, as you see in this figure. Previously, we learned that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Now, if I continue the reflected rays in the backside of the mirror, which is shown by dashed line, it seems that the rays are coming from a point P2, as you see. We call P2 the image of P1. If I have an object instead of point P1, I can divide the object into many points, and each, points, and each point have a unique image point. The result of all image points is the image of the object. The next type of mirror we discuss is paraboloidal mirror. The paraboloidal mirrors are a reflective paraboloid of revolution, as you see in this figure. Here we see that the side view of a paraboloidal mirror and the dashed line is the optical axis. All rays parallel to the axis no matter close to or far from the axis are focused to a single point that we call the focus or the focal point. The distance PF where P is the apex of the paraboloid is called the focal length. We usually use these kinds of mirrors as light collecting elements in telescopes. So in that case they are called collimators. Now elliptical mirrors. An elliptical mirror reflects all the rays emitted from one of its foci like P1 and emits them onto the other focus P2 as you see in this figure. If you remember in the last videos I said there might be more than one optical path links between two points that have the least travel time. Here you see an example. As you see, all path connecting points P, point P1 to P2 have the same length. We know this from calculus 2. Now, since the refractive index of the medium is the same for all paths, the Heros principle says that all optical paths are equal. Remember that optical path length is the length times the refractive index. The next type is spherical mirror. It has neither the focusing property of the paraboloidal mirror nor the imaging property of the elliptical mirror. But why? As you see, the parallel rays meet the optical axis at different points. Here, the optical axis is the diameter of the sphere. You see an envelope for the rays shown by a dashed curve in this figure. We call the curve caustic curve. However, the parallel rays close to the optical axis are almost focused onto a single point F. Point F is located a distance minus R over 2 from the mirror center. R is called the radius of the curvature of the mirror, and it is negative for concave mirror and positive for convex mirrors. In this textbook, we explicitly show the negative sign as you see in the figure. So R itself is positive. Okay, up to now, we talked about parallel rays but now I want to discuss the rays making an angle with respect to the mirror's axis. If the angle is so small that I can write 
sine theta equals theta, the ray is, the ray is called paraxial. Here the theta is the angle of the ray with respect to the axis. In the paraxial approximation, a spherical mirror has a focusing property like that of the paraboloidal mirror and imaging property like that of the elliptical mirror, as we will see later. The body of the rules that results from the approximation for, forms paraxial optics or also first order optics or Gaussian optics. So here we see a spherical mirror. A spherical mirror of radius r in the paraxial approximation acts like a paraboloidal mirror of focal length r over 2, as you see here. So the dashed one is a sphere, and the red one is a cross-section of the paraboloidal mirror. So as we see here, when we are very close to the axis, the spherical mirror is tangent to the paraboloidal mirror. So this is the paraxial approximation. Now we want to drive the equation of mirrors. As we see in this figure, all paraxial rays originated from a point P1 on the axis are focused to a single point P2 on the axis. In this figure, we have chosen theta2 negative because of downward traveling of the ray. So this is a matter of convention. So in some other textbooks, uh, it is regarded to be positive. So it doesn't matter so much. Now, as you see, theta zero is an external angle with respect to this triangle that starts from P1 to this point and then back to C. So theta zero is theta one plus theta, where theta is the angle of ref uh, incidence or reflection, both are equal. Also here, minus theta two is an external angle with respect to this triangle. So minus theta two is theta zero plus theta. So from these two, I can conclude that minus theta two plus theta one is two theta zero. When the angles are small, I can write theta, an angle theta equal to sine theta or tangent of theta. Both are almost equal. So here I can write theta, tangent of theta zero is almost theta zero. Now, if the height of this uh, reflection point is y, I can write theta zero equal to tangent of theta, which is y over minus r. Remember that the uh, radius is negative for concave mirrors. Then theta one here is y, the height divided by the distance from uh, the mirror. The distance of point P1 from the mirror is Z1. Also, I can write minus theta two as y divided by this distance, which is Z2. And if you remember from the previous slide, I proved that minus theta of two plus theta one is two theta zero. And theta zero is y over minus r. So this should be equal to two y divided by minus r. And 
then I can substitute theta 1 and theta 2 from these two equations and put it equal to the right side. So y over z1 plus y over z2 is almost 2y divided by, by minus r. So if I simplify, I can get the equations of mirrors. 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 is almost 2 divided by, by minus r. Here, z1 is the distance between the mirror and the source. So the point source here is p1. And z2 is the distance between the mirror and the image point, which is p2 here. And r is the radius of curvature. So if the uh, mirror was convex, then the radius was positive. You should notice that the z-axis is toward the left. So as you see here, 0 is here, and z1 and z2 are toward left. Now, if I put my object p1 at infinity, then if I come back to the previous slide, if z1 goes to infinity, 1 over z1 goes to 0, and then z2 becomes minus r over 2. Okay, so I can conclude that the rays coming from infinity are almost par parallel to their z-axis and focus on a focal point with focal length minus r over 2. Because when p1 goes to infinity, theta 1 becomes almost 0, which means that the ray is almost parallel to the axis. Then if I substitute f into the previous equation, I can conclude that 1 over z1 plus 1 over z2 is 1 over f, where f is the focal length of the mirror.